Working when you're 12, unless you're Macaulay Culkin in um, Home Alone or something, apart from actors and models, that's sort of unheard of. So, I mean, that, how do they get around that? I mean, they get around it because nobody knows it's happening, really. Um, uh, you know, Scientology staff members are considered religious volunteers. They're not actually considered, um, in the eyes of the law, employees, even though they're on staff contracts, but it's really a contract defining the terms of your volunteer status. Um, believe me, Scientology doesn't consider you a volunteer. They just hide behind that when it comes to the law. Yeah. Were you excited to start working? I was excited because my mom made us excited. Like this is, this is one of the sources of friction where it really rubs her the wrong way that I would ever describe anything about, um, this path that we traveled into becoming Scientology staff members as anything other than our own decision, something we wanted to do, we decided to do. And you go, we're kids. We do what you tell us to do. We try to be as excited about it as possible. You know, that's kind of what kids, you know, even if you, you make a kid do something they don't want to do, eventually they're going to figure out how to have at least as much fun as possible doing the thing they didn't want to do in the first place. That's how kids work. Um, and, and so like, even the fact that I'm going to be like, we didn't want to do it. And she'd be like, well, it was your decision. It's like, we didn't even, how can you make a decision about something you don't even know what it is? Like, you don't know the decision. And, and then you're being guided that way by your parents, by your parents. And it's like, uh, so we didn't, we got excited about it because we had to and chose to and were expected to. And it's it's not like we were dragged kicking and screaming through this entire process. We, we eventually uh, were convinced to do it, um, decided we wanted to do it, uh, got good at doing it and succeeded in doing it. But when that, when that whole thing starts at the age of 12, you know, uh, the fact that my mom's always sort of even been unwilling to acknowledge that um, you're you're right. That wasn't really something of your own choosing. I pushed you along that way. She she just hangs on to the fact of, oh, but you didn't put up that much of a fight. And it's like, oh, come on. You know, like, honestly, like, like she, uh, she does not like the episode that I filmed of Leah Remini Scientology in the aftermath. You know, her response to that was sort of like, oh, you must hate me. And I'm like the fuck are you talking about? Like, I can't talk about my own life without you making it about you. How about you understand where I'm coming from and show a little bit of, you know, humility um, and, and perspective that it's not all about you. It's actually about your kids, which, um, yeah, anyway, I don't want to go on a tangent. Yeah. Well, Erin, you'll be delighted to know we've actually got your mum in the studio to, <laughs> to have this conversation. Jerry, Jerry. No, um, I wouldn't usually make that joke about these kinds of things, except I know Erin quite well now. So no, I mean, I mean, look, I'm, I'm, I love the humor. And, and But look, uh, there, there are secret little groups tucked away in corners of the internet for second generation Scientologists. And this is a very common theme where the first generation parents who brought their second generation, um, you know, their kids into it are just um, completely unwilling to acknowledge the effect that bringing kids into something like this and pushing them to do it and expecting them to do it and putting up the guardrails so that they can't really not do it uh, gives them a significantly different experience than the adults who chose to do all this on their own determinism and the unwillingness to, to, to even recognize that there's two different experiences here, uh, leads to a lot of tension in a lot of former Scientology families. So it's, it's not unique. It's not unique to me at all. And, and it seems to be pretty damn consistent, you know, pretty damn consistent. I, I can actually, I can imagine that I can, I can see that. Um, so at 12 years old, what kind of work are you and your twin brother doing? So at this point, it's just studying. It's just studying. So we, well, when we joined staff at the Philadelphia Org, it was with a view of going full time to Clearwater, Florida to train as professional Scientology auditors. Um, but you can't go to Florida to do that training until you've already done a bunch of basic training at your own organization. So there was a handful of Scientology courses to the Scientologists watching, you know, staff status one and two, student hat, method one, co-audit, and, you know, other basic courses. <laughs> um, and, you know, those courses themselves would take not less than six months of part-time study. Because we weren't, we were studying, um, so remember I said I went to public school until the sixth grade. So for the seventh grade 
And at this time, my mom had remarried. So I had me, my twin brother, my younger brother, my stepbrother, my stepsister. Uh, except my younger brother didn't live with us full time. He lived with his father half, most of the time. So we basically had four kids in the household and two parents. Okay. Um, my mom and my stepdad. And so what we did for the seventh grade is we were pulled out of school to do homeschool. And we would do homeschool during the morning and, and the afternoon. And then we would go into the org uh, five nights a week and the weekends. So as a 12 year old, or maybe at this point, maybe I'd already turned 13. We are going into the Scientology org in downtown Philadelphia to study from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. That's our study schedule. I mean, you're studying until 10 o'clock at night. I have three kids of my own. I couldn't imagine. I'm, I'm telling them to go to bed by 10. <laughs> I mean, we're just we're just getting off of course at 10. We still have to wrap up and you know drive a half hour home and everything like that. And that's pretty much from what I can recall. I think seven days a week, maybe six, maybe six days a week. So just to get just to get that right, that was what so homeschool, and then at seven p and after that at seven p.m. to ten p.m. Did you say? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, it's Correct. Sad. And it's one of these things where as a kid, I can remember being like, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be doing this. But it's not like we're working in the coal mines. We're just sitting here studying uh, books in a course. Like it's not, it's not exactly heavy labor. And, and, you're, and you're like, I don't understand half of what I'm studying. I mean, this stuff is absurdly this is adults have ha, adults struggle to understand some of this material. We're 12, maybe 13 at this point. And, and we have to do it because this is what we have to do in order to go to Clearwater to flag. And again, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to exaggerate anything. It's not like, Oh my, I can think of much worse things, but a lot of things get justified with that explanation. Oh, there's worse things. Well, there's always worse things. <laughs> <laughs> well, in some parts of Scientology, there aren't many worse things in the in the deepest parts, you know, in the hole and things like that. But uh, we can get further into the mechanics of Scientology late, later on. But I mean, some of yeah, it really so, is so the answer, Yeah, so the answer was we're just studying at this point, studying Scientology, yeah. studying Scientology and doing Scientology courses so that we can qualify to go to Clearwater to study more Scientology courses. And, um, and we did okay. You know, we did okay on it. It took us a while, but not not a long time. And then eventually, I was 13 when we finished those courses and were approved to go to Clearwater to study full time, which is what I then did for the next three years straight. What about maths, French, <laughs> biology stuff? Do do you, do most people who grow up in Scientology then lack some of that stuff? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I didn't go to high school. I, I mean, I, like, yeah, I I never. We did homeschool for the seventh grade. We technically speaking, were certified as having finished the seventh grade, and that was it. How old's that? So seventh grade. And so I, um, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, twelve years old, thirteen years old, depending on when you started I school. I started school a little early, um, so for me it would have been twelve, uh, late okay. twelve, early thirteen. So you don't know what an Oxbow Lake is. What's Oxbow Lake? <laughs> that was like this stupid thing that I always remember from like my geography GCSE, uh, a 16 year old exam when I was 16 or whatever. Uh, and I always like, it was the one thing that I remembered on the tests was what an Oxbow Lake is. And it was like, it's when a river, this is for everyone's gonna be fascinated to know this, has a bend in it. And eventually the bend gets so big that the river just goes over it. So it goes straight. And then, it, then the bit that was the bend gets cut off. And then it's an Oxbow Lake. That's funny. No, the only lakes that I remember is Okeechobee and Titicaca. <laughs> yeah, well, well, those are those those are great names. <laughs> those are the names you learn at twelve, though. But no, that, I mean, it's a thing, isn't it? And I spoke to some former Scientologists about it, and they really feel like they were let down, like they didn't get that. And on the one hand, I would say, as somebody who did then go through the typical education, you do forget ninety nine percent of it. So you know, but I'm sure there's stuff that you must you must feel. Do you feel a bit resentful about having missed out on that? Um, the only reason I don't is because I've been quite successful. Um, but like, I wish I'd had an opportunity to study like political science, uh, or computer science or, um, or history more. Cause I find those things fascinating and it's hard to just casually spend hours and hours and hours learning about that stuff. Cause you're supposed to be able to get an opportunity to do that in school. 
Um, but you know, it's one of those things, like you just mentioned, you forget 99% of the stuff that you've learned. I have not necessarily found that people who have gone through the traditional system and gone to university and all that stuff, I have not personally found that those people are any more prepared or better equipped to succeed in life than I am. So I don't have a ton of regret. I do just wonder, um, yeah, but you've done well without all that. Just imagine what you could have done with some of that. Well, know? well, yeah, and or, or or you might be a bit of an anomaly. There are loads of us. Look, to do what you and I do, it, it is quite different to school and the stuff you learn there. But you must know some people who grew up in Scientology who maybe haven't done as well, who might have benefited from a more stable and traditional educational system. I would say most of them fall into that category. And when I say I've been successful, I don't mean on YouTube. I, I've been successful in business outside of YouTube. Um, and so, uh, and, and sometimes people will ask me, well, did Scientology give you any of the tools that helped you do that? And I sort of go, how the hell would I know? It's the only path that I traveled. Like it can be very hard for me to be able to differentiate between what are the qualities that are sort of innate and I would have taken into life no matter what, or what sort of qualities did perhaps I learn from Scientology. I'm more inclined to think that some of the negative personality traits or aspects are more likely to be what I took from Scientology. But again, who knows? It, it's hard to know, you know? I, I, I do happen to be someone who believes that most of our personality traits and characteristics are genetic. I mean, I do believe that. Um, and so who knows? Who knows? And I forget what the question I was asking was. Oh, oh that, just the education. You know, I am sort of a sponge for knowledge. Like, I do feel like I can probably... Um, I am one of these people who would greatly benefit from just uh, like, have you ever heard of the Khan Academy? It's basically like a free online academy um, I, um, from K through 12 and even up to higher education. I believe it's free. Um, uh, I, I'm someone who I think tries to soak up knowledge about subjects I'm passionate about, even if it has nothing to do with what I do for a living. I just personally love those things. Whereas, so if I had traveled a more traditional route, I would probably have found a subject that I'm really passionate about and wound up being a professional in that area. Do you know what I mean? Whereas now um, I just study those subjects just for fun. Join me on The Edge for new episodes every week. Start watching right now.